Hello everybody. This is Manju from Meyer Hitham. Happy Friday to all of you. I hope I'm live. Yes, I think I am. Happy Friday to all of you. I am just going to put the topic for today. And uh, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and ask me questions. All of you are doing well. I know I took uh, two weeks of off. I was um, away um, spending time with family at the farm with no internet. So I couldn't uh, connect with all of you for the past two weeks. But I'm back again today with a new topic. The topic for today is going to be all about knowing about sleep, how important sleep is why is it important and if you're not able to sleep what are a few things that ayurveda recommends for you to go to sleep so we will first talk about what is the importance of sleep before even going to finding out what are the uh, what are the treatments what is it that ayurveda recommends for sleep we will first talk about what is sleep why is it important and what happens when you don't sleep all of that implications and any time during my talk today you're more than welcome to ask me question answers you can go ahead and type all the question answers questions you can type me all you can type all the questions and i will be answering them all at the end of the talk so when we talk about sleep what what is sleep sleep really dictates whether we're happy or sad it dictates whether we're able to grasp things or not able to grasp things whether there is nourishment or depletion even that is even that is determined by sleep uh, if you're having energy or if you're having weakness even if you're having life all of this is determined by the quality of sleep by the type of sleep that you're having. So sleep is really recommended as one of the three main pillars of life for us to maintain life, the other two being food and balance of senses. So how does sleep happen every day? Every day we go through a lot of work in the morning. We do so many things, so many activities. Finally, our senses have to retire. So there is this there are three gunas in um, Ayurveda that is called Sattva, Raja and Tama. Tama is this dull, inactive state that is more dominant at nighttime. Sattva, which has full of energy, which can grasp things easily, is much more early in the morning. Rajas will help us be active. That is more during the midday and tamas is much more during the end of the day so when tamas is more at night that is when our senses are drawing back it's like our channels are closing it's a natural phenomena that our body follows the circadian rhythm and our senses go back to saying okay i will take rest now so that the amount of rest that the body gets at night will determine the type of productivity we get the next day so many things happen when there is sleep when we're going through sleep right when there is deep sleep there is so many things that are happening there is a lot of blood flow that goes into your muscles there is release of growth hormones why do you think babies sleep for about 16 to 20 hours when they're born during their infancy you see that babies are 
sleeping for 16 to 20 hours and 24 hours, that determines the amount of growth they get. But for us adults, that is cell repair. We get a lot of repair or cell repair happens when, when there is the when there is good sleep there is release of hormones there's also flushing out of things flushing out of waste from brain the tissue growth cell repair all of these deeper things happen during that deep state of sleep so when we're getting all of these benefits by doing nothing all we have to do is just sleep Usually, if we have to achieve something, if there's something that we have to achieve, we really have to work hard towards it. We have to do something to get it. But here, you don't have to do anything. All you have to do is go to bed and sleep. And you're getting all these benefits. You, you are able to recharge your body again for next day, right? So then let's understand what happens if there is no sleep. When there's no sleep, most of you must have um, experienced this, that there are going to be body pains. There's going to be tiredness, lethargy. You will not even understand what other person is speaking to you. You're groggy. There's going to be hair loss. There's dry hair. There's gray hair, unable to digest, dizziness. So many things happen. I mean, if you're not sleeping for one day or two days, this is not going to happen. But if it is continuous, if there is chronic insomnia, or if you're not sleeping for longer time, then of course you will see all of these things that creep in, which means you're really taking loan from future. If you are not sleeping by choice, right? If you're not sleeping by choice because there's a lot of work, then you're really taking loan from future. If you're taking loan, you have to make sure that you have the capacity to repay. If you don't have the capacity to repay, then it's better not to take the loan. If not, you have to pay with bigger interest later on, which is going to be all those, um, all those conditions that we just listed. So let's understand why this happens, why this insomnia happens. There are several reasons for this insomnia to happen. Understanding why we're not sleeping will help us better treat it. What are, what are the things that we have to choose to treat it, right? So the first thing that can happen is a vata type of insomnia. Vata is really that... Um, dryness that is increased in the body there is a lot of air element and space element that is increased in the body so why does this happen it can happen if we're eating a lot of dry foods there is not a lot of moisture in the type of foods that we're eating no oil or if we're working out too much during the day more than our capacity increasing our capacity that can happen or if you have a profession that you have to talk too much or if you are um, you're doing your training for a marathon or if you're working out too much during the day that can also happen if there is if you're suffering from depression grief anxiety all of these will it's it's kind of movement that happens in the body that movement will increase vata in the body and for sleep to happen naturally, we require some kind of stability. And that stability is lost if the vata is increased in the body. If this movement is increased because of all of these, then stability is reduced. And because of reduced instability, we're not able to sleep. We go to bed, we toss around, we turn around. We, we try to sleep, we do everything possible, but then we're not able to sleep because internally there's not a lot of stability. That is one kind of insomnia. The second kind could be there is increased heat in the body. It could be you're working on a project and you're really, really working towards it. That is all you have in your mind. Anytime you think about it, it's 
it's that project that you think about how can i do it what can i do it that is the rumination is going on in your brain and that increases heat and you're eating spicy food heat increasing foods or in general you have a heat nature there's anger inside the body so this can increase heat in the body and that heat will also not let you slow down that heat will not let you settle down and sleep properly at night so that's the second type of insomnia the third type of insomnia is if you're eating very heavy foods heavy junk foods or oily foods which you're not able to digest at all so digestion is hampered and because of reduced digestion because of heaviness in the because of increased heaviness you are very uncomfortable that you're not able to sleep so understanding where you fall in the spectrum will help you first find out what what is it that you can do for it right so first find out where do you fall which spectrum do you fall under and then find out what is it that you can do first definitely removing the positive factors we spoke about drawing things especially with the mental with thinking a lot we do a lot of thinking process another thing that we do a lot is catching up on those netflix shows we want to make sure that when kids are out sleeping we want to catch up on all of those netflix shows at night watching so you're giving a lot of senses to your body lot of senses at night before sleeping which means you're activating your brain at that time if you're activating it too much then it will be very difficult for it to calm down another thing that we also uh, do most of the times to be efficient at work because we're always working 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 all the time to be more efficient we resort to sharp drinks like coffee or energy drinks they also increase depletion they they deplete and they reduce the mucosal lining in the body and reduce the stability so understanding the causative factors first and removing the causative factors that are hindering you from getting a good night's sleep is definitely the first step to do then if there is a lot of dryness in the body one good thing that you can do is definitely drink a warm cup of milk warm cup of milk with good spices nutmeg a pinch of nutmeg is very very good and a pinch of cinnamon with one teaspoon of ghee yes i'm saying one teaspoon of ghee in one cup of warm milk definitely make sure that you have the ability to digest it if you're not able to digest it maybe that's not a good idea for you but that's one thing that you can do if there is a lot of dryness in the body another thing that you can also do is abhyanga applying oil all over your body will increase stability oil oiling your body will send stability to the deeper tissues and make sure that there is stability and will help you sleep so in the morning making it a routine that you are applying oil all over your body and leaving it on for 20 minutes and shower it off or if you're not able to apply all over your body definitely make sure that you apply it on your scalp make sure that you you massage your scalp really well you apply it on your scalp applying oil in your ears and oiling your soles so consider this is your soul then you really rub your soul like this about 50 to 75 times and rub it like this and also toes don't forget the toes make sure you really really rub the soles of your feet that's where the nerve endings are all the nerve endings are there and you're pacifying all the nerve endings when you're when you do the massage when you do the oil massage you can do you can choose any oil you can choose sesame oil or coconut oil if it's very hot outside right now you can use coconut oil or you can use warm sesame oil really rub your feet and you can put on socks for your uh, you can make sure you wash off your feet first 
apply oil, rub it really well, and then apply socks. This is the routine that you can do right before you go to bed. If you have a lot of dryness in your body, a lot of um, movement in the body, this will create stability. And uh, we spoke about drinking milk. Another thing that you can also do is if there is, if you are feeling cold, sometimes a lot of people who has increased vata in the body, that is increased air element and space element in the body, have increased cold. So make sure that you get a heavy blanket and cover yourself. Make sure that it is all cozy in the room. That is also one thing you have to make sure. And uh, another thing that you can also do is um, medicated alcohols. Ayurveda also has um, medicated alcohols called arishtas. Um, these are something that are available if you go to an Ayurvedic practitioner. Arishtas are something that can also put you to sleep. Or if you're a meat eater, you can uh, uh, do meat soups so, so that the stability is increased. Meat soups are very good um, to give you good stability, to give you good nourishment and very light to digest. So these are all you can do if you have increased vata in the body, which is increased movement, increased dryness in the body, you're tossing and turning and you're not able to sleep at all at night. Um, another good thing that you can also do is putting a cotton, uh, apply, take good cotton swab, put oil on it and uh, put it on the top of your head, tie it up and you can leave it on at night. I know it's going to mess up your blankets and it's going to mess up your, your um, pillow covers, but that you're, you're really pacifying this area also. You're pacifying your soles of your feet, you're pacifying your, um, the top of your head, and that will really increase your stability. So that's the first thing. The second thing, if you have a lot of heat in the body, and that's why you're not able to sleep, you, my friend, also um, like good smells, good music. So play some good music. Put some good scents in the room, good essential oils on yourself, and you can put some room scents, good, good smells around you. Make sure that all the lights are dimmed down completely and really make sure to sleep by at least 10 or even before 11. And make sure that there is less spicy foods for you. This will really help you sleep. And if you have lots of mucus, lots of heaviness in the body, and that is why you're not able to sleep, then make sure that you do not eat after 6 p.m. Eat only before 6 p.m. Eat light dinner. Heavy lunch is okay, but not heavy dinner. Make sure you eat very light dinner and take good teas throughout the day so that you're digesting properly and make sure there is some physical exertion in the day. That physical exertion will really, will really um, increase that uh, ability for you to increase the tamas in the body and help you sleep. So that is one thing that you can do. And make sure that you're not exercising definitely before bed. Do not exercise before bed because that will increase a lot of movement in the body. Do not cause that excess movement in the body right before sleeping. And right before sleeping, do not watch any screen. Make sure that you're staying away from screen for about 30 minutes. Try to read a book or think about the thoughts, think about what happened throughout the day. And really the textbooks have written that the gratitude that you have about the day will help you sleep. Another most important thing that has helped for many people is observing your breath just when you're sleeping. So you're sleeping and you're moving, you're turning, you're tossing, you're not able to sleep. What I suggest is you put your, you, you put your hand on your tummy. Now you cannot see my tummy, but you, can, you put your hand on your tummy and really take long, deep breaths. Mm 
really long breaths and take about 20 of those breaths and make sure you put the attention on the breath. When you put the attention on the breath and take 20 of those breaths, I guarantee that you are able to sleep because there's lots of processing, lots of things that we have done throughout the day and they go on and on and on and these thoughts will not let you sleep also. Thoughts also increase vata in the body. So make sure that you put attention on your breath. That is one more trick that you can follow if you're not able to sleep. Again, if you have any questions, any specific questions, feel free to ask your questions and I will be able to answer those questions. Um, uh, but I will go ahead and talk a little more about why is it important. One more thing I wanted to also talk about is I understand that it is mandatory for a few people to care for loved ones and to work at night, do graveyard shifts and not able to sleep at night. They have to be up all night, which means they have to follow a different routine. For them, it's best to sleep half the amount of sleep the next morning before they eat their lunch. So if you're, if you're used to sleeping eight hours, then sleep for about four to five hours before your lunch, have your lunch, and then wait until your lunch is digested, then sleep for an hour. That way you're able to get your good sleep as well. That's what's recommended in the textbooks. Uh, if you are, it is, it is not by choice. You should not do this as a practice and abuse your body. But if it is necessary for you to take care of loved ones or any, any mandatory reason, then you can follow that. Another thing that I get a lot from teenagers and college going kids is that, is it okay if I sleep eight hours and if I just sleep at 2 a.m. and wake up at 10 a.m.? That's what I get a lot. I say no, you still have to sleep on time. I will say at least close to 11. 10 is ideal, but at least close to 11 is important. And I'll tell you why. Because between 10 to 2 is what is called as Pittakal in Ayurveda, which means a lot of digestion is also happening during that time. Cellular metabolism is also happening. There's lots of things that are happening inside the body. And you're hampering that if you're not going to sleep at that time. If you wait until 2, then you're not getting this deep cellular metabolism that you were supposed to get. And that waste that was supposed to be removed will, will also be compromised. So for you to get maximum benefit following the sun cycle, following the circadian rhythm of sleeping at 10 p.m., which is the Tama time. Anyway, you're, you wake up at that time, you still are not able to comprehend what you're supposed to work. If you wake up in the morning before six, that is the sattva time. That is when you're able to comprehend a lot of things. So, and the moon energy, which is cooling, environment is also supporting you get, sta get stability. Getting that moon, moon energy also is very, very important. So that is why I say for teenagers and college going kids, especially, that at least going to bed by 11 p.m. is very, very important for long term. Um, again, if not, you are taking loan from future and there are implications that you would have to face in the future. So this one thing that I, I wanted to stress for kids. And um, also for us, work expands into time. If we have a lot of time, then we would want to work. But if we have the discipline, that no matter what, my day ends at 10. Your day will end at 10, for sure. We have the tendency to work more if there is more time. So having the discipline that no matter what, I will sleep at 10 will definitely let you sleep at 10. And uh, again, if you're, one more important thing I wanted to say also is um, if you're not able to sleep well, no matter what you try, different things you try, you're not able to sleep. Try this one thing. 
they say that if you're sleeping east west direction that is the most important direction that that will help you better uh, sleep better east west direction somehow magnetic field of earth will not interfere with our sleep if you're uh, sleeping south north direction if you have to really sleep north south direction because of the room um, that's how the room is placed then put your head towards south never put your legs towards south and that that way your the magnetic uh, there's no um, there's no increased pressure in your brain because of the magnetic forces that's one more thing i wanted to say as well and also really feel how much are we feeding the senses before we go to bed uh, let me take a few questions um, you wake up at two or three and don't get sleep for an hour or two many have this problem yeah so if there is a lot of pitta in the body that is what i have noticed that uh, you wake up at two or three and then you're not able to go back to uh, sleep for an hour so what you do at that time if you wake up at that time really go back to observing your breath again and go back to go go back to sleep try to go back to sleep again by observing your breath like i mentioned earlier you put your hand on your tummy and take really really deep breaths and try to uh, move your focus towards that breath and that will really really help you and um, uh, again applying uh, oil on top of your head like i mentioned earlier and doing abhyanga or also other things that will really stabilize you and check the spice level also that you've been doing umesh pandit that's the um, answer for your question thank you for asking and uh, afternoon naps good or bad thank you for asking that question definitely not good afternoon naps are one thing um, that i i've missed saying you can do it now in summer because the environment is very much depleting it will take away our energy so during that time it's okay to have a 20 minute nap and you can sit up and nap not sleep because what happens is your channels get closed especially right after you sleep right after you eat there's a lot of food that's supposed to be digested and your channels gets closed when you're sleeping so your mucus increases in the body there's a lot of lethargy a lot of heaviness you really feel tired after you wake up when you take an afternoon nap so it's not recommended it's only recommended for small kids or if you're elderly person or if you're suffering from any disease or when it's summer outside that's when it's recommended other than that they say vama kukshi in ayurveda after you eat you're allowed to rest on your left side like that you can you can sleep like that in your on your left side for 20 minutes and that's about it and that's to regulate um, how the food is digested pitta insomnia might be ba maybe balanced with music i hear that correct very very correct yes it can be balanced with music light music um, play light music that you like because Pittas like that good sound and they also like good smells. Make sure that there is good smells also. Uh, maybe applying rose pads, apply, applying uh, cotton pads with rose water on it and applying it on your eyes and sleeping it will cool down and that will also help. Another thing that you can do is uh, applying one or two drops of ghee into both of your eyes that will also really help with the pitta type of insomnia um yeah i hope i answered that question any more questions that you have i will be happy to answer that as well um really this is uh the reason i came up with this is we take it for granted we take it that we sleep when we sleep uh, we sleep when we want to sleep but we really need to sleep when we get sleep we shouldn't stop that urge of sleep the urge of sleep that you really get if you focus is about 10 pm because that's when the tamoguna in the body increases and you are ready to retire your senses are ready to retire that's when you really have that urge of sleep 
if you stop that urge, then getting that urge back is also very difficult. If you have done that for a longer period of time, then it then you would be suffering from insomnia later on. But so to correct it, to, to bring it back to normal, get to maybe what we call is if you're if you're used to sleeping at 1230 or one, then sleep 15 minutes earlier first night, another 15 minutes earlier the second night. Don't try to sleep at 10 a.m. If you're used to sleeping at 1 a.m., don't sleep at 10 p.m. the first day itself. You will not be able to sleep and you will give up. So uh, make sure you sleep just 15 minutes and increase that increments throughout. That will also help. And uh, is there a connection between insomnia and autoimmune disorders? It could be. It could be very um, nice connection. It could be definitely with a lot of indigestion and um, uh, there will be a lot of indigestion because of insomnia and because of that there could be autoimmune disorders also it is a longer stretch if you have done it for a longer period of time I will not be surprised that there will be a connection between that yes oh thank you so much Mridul. yeah so I wanted to address that if you have any other questions you have as well in general not just sleep I just um, I just took the top of sleep today but if you have any other questions in general about ayurveda if you have uh, um, any specific questions that you have about ayurveda i'll be happy to answer that as well and that's the reason i come out every friday to answer those questions and uh, next week i already have a topic someone suggested to talk about uh, puberty menstruation etc so i'll be talking about uh, puberty menstruation etc uh, next week but if you have any topics specific that you like to hear i'll be happy to um, talk about those topics as well oh thank you so much for attending raji Teenagers often say they perform the best at that hour late night. Yeah, that's what they think, no, um, uh, That's what they're used to. You know, I was uh, um, when I was a little kid, I remember I would always wake up at uh, 3.30, 4 in the morning for my, for my tests. My grandfather, we never had an alarm at that time. My grandfather would wake up at uh, 3.30, 4, and I would ask him, wake me up, and he would wake me up. So that's the time I really remember that I could retain everything. But I think what teenagers think is that it's all quiet during that time. Everything is died down and they can get it. But if we explain them what happens, if we explain them that the stability is needed at that time, they're probably understanding, they're probably performing their best, but they did not try waking up early. They probably did not try waking up early and... Um, um, and see how how that helps for them um, try that uh, uh, explain them in a logical way they they need to hear everything logically uh, that stability is needed and tell them that uh, gray hair hair loss acne so many things will happen and they'll have to pay for that in the future that they'll have to uh, work hard to combat all of those and then they'll probably listen I know it's a it's a big battle that's the first question i ask whenever i see a teenager is what time do you go to bed that's the first question i ask and i i am very happy if i hear an uh, answer 10 p.m hair loss has come twice this week in my practice absolutely i'll talk about uh, hair loss also next time i can't sleep postponing the work to early morning i'm trying many ways maybe a session dedicated to teenagers yeah so definitely i will do that also session dedicated to teenagers yeah, so they'll say that they cannot, again, work expands into time. They should not be postponing the work too early morning. Now, I know they do have a lot of work, but uh, really able to uh, organize their work better will help them get things early. This thing, I've, I've learned this from my boss. We used to have about 100 people work in our pharmacy and Later on, we reduced the workforce and they were still able to do the same amount of work. We were told that he would always say work 
would definitely expand into time. So maybe that will also help the teenagers. Applying castor oil on eyes before going to sleep. If applied, what is a good way of cleaning eyes next morning? So castor oil is probably going to be very, very sticky, uh, Rupa. Um, I would suggest some kind of ghee. Ghee is very, very good when you apply into the eyes. Um, just regular ghee, not any special ghee also. You can just apply a regular ghee, one to two drops, which is uh, melted into your eyes. And, um, and you don't even have to clean it the next day. It will be absorbed inside and it's very, very good for your eyes. I'm not sure what you're applying castor oil for, but uh, castor oil is going to be very, very sticky. Uh, and especially applying oil is not a good idea. But uh, uh, ghee, applying ghee is mentioned in the textbooks and it's very, very good. Yes, teenager special, definitely. We'll do that, Madhu. Yeah, so uh, next week is uh, probably going to be about um, uh, puberty and menstruation, which is part of about teenagers also. Um, but uh, I will talk definitely for teenagers only, all the um, information for teenagers. It's, it, it's very, very important. They get this information very young. My kids are stuck with me. They are like, oh my God, I have this Ayurveda mom and we have to follow. And they're stuck with me. And that's what they really know from childhood. They don't know anything else. Um, but uh, hearing from a third person and hearing with logic will probably help them. I'll uh, try to do that, definitely. Good. So if there are no questions, Navneet, I uh, have 9 p.m. Is that the time you sleep? Maybe that's the time you sleep. That's good. If you're sleeping by 9 p.m., that's definitely good. <laughs> <laughs> not stuck, left out. That's not how they feel though. They feel that they're stuck. We'll wait for hair care. Yeah, definitely. I'll do a um, video on the hair care tips also. This I'm Shalini. Uh, Shalini. I'll do that. Definitely. Great. All right. So thank you so much for joining. If there are no more questions, um, you can always um, uh, direct message me as well. If you have any specific questions, I'll be happy to answer those questions. But if you have no other questions, uh, see you all and um, until next week. Any ideas for dry eyes? Yeah, dry eyes, definitely. Um, the ghee, applying ghee uh, is a very good idea. Trifala ghrita, specifically from Ayurveda. Melt ghee and apply one or two drops into your eyes is one good idea. Because what happens is, our eyes are a combination of pitta and kapha. There is heat in, in there and there's mucus in there. It is a perfect combination. It requires the perfect combination of both heat and uh, mucus. The heat is required for it to be able to grasp things and that saumya tattva is required and that mucus is also required. So ghrita, ghee, is a perfect combination of both of them and that's why Applying two drops of um, good quality ghee and especially Trifla Grita is very, very good for dry eyes. And um, maybe definitely uh, observe how much spice you do in your diet. Uh, doing uh, rose water pads on your eyes also is another good idea. Best time to wake up is um, uh, Brahma Muhurta is what we call in Ayurveda. It is 48 minutes before sunrise. Um, that's the time that sattva is high in the environment. You will be able to get everything. Uh, you wake up and if you want to work on a project, if you want to work on learning something, that is definitely a best time to wake up. But again, if you're used to waking up at 7, don't start to wake up by 4.30 tomorrow. Uh, train your body slowly. That's what Ayurveda says. Never do anything quickly. You have to train your body slowly and get to to get to that perfection it's always trying to achieve to that perfection so uh, right now it's summer and uh, sunrise is probably around 5 5 30 ish so 4 30 is the right time according to the textbooks but uh, whatever works for you best is always good again waking up at that time will help you clear the bowel movement bowel movement also happens very easily 
any parents have issue getting their five-year-old get to sleep by 10 p.m yeah i have seen that in the past that uh, um some uh, some child some kids they do have high energy they do have a lot of vata in their body um maybe because of the birth by birth all of us have different constitutions so if the child already has a lot of movement in the body a lot of vata in the body then definitely um, they will not want to sleep by 10 p.m their body is already uh, always movement there's movement in the body and they would not want to sleep by 10 p.m so uh, definitely doing abhyanga for them applying a whole body massage for them and doing that feet massage that i spoke about for them before they go to bed doing bedtime stories having a routine for them uh, cajoling them and telling them how important it is to go to bed and by 9 p.m you should bring them to bed having a bedtime routine like doing a massage for them a, a feet massage my kids love it they they look forward for that doing a massage for them say telling them a story telling them about your day it will really connect you and you're also doing that doing the um a treat doing the procedure without them knowing so it's not them being rebellious about it so um then automatically you're you're helping them get in the beginning it's going to be difficult it's going it feels like you're it's a long procedure that you have to follow but once you do this religiously in routine then you will be able to definitely help to get them to sleep by 10 p.m and also see if they're having grounding foods in their um, diet like uh, tubers sweet potatoes ghee milk um, and giving them milk right before bed also helps so grounding them really also helps um i hope that i answered your question ashwini on that one uh yes there are diet plans for weight loss depending on um so some amount of weight is necessary for functioning right what we sp uh, speak about um now there is a trend of a lot of depletion um uh, really if some good amount of weight is necessary for the body so we don't want to go to the trend of depleting where our myelin sheath is depleted where our muco mucosal lining is depleted that kind of depletion we don't want but if there is really genuinely um excess weight than necessary yes ayurveda can definitely help with that and i have posts on my um a facebook page about uh, some weight loss tips i have just posted that also you can go ahead and check that out but you can um ask if you have any specific questions great okay if you have no other questions see you all next week um i'll have another session at 5 30 and uh, hopefully next session is going to be about menstruation and uh, uh, puberty and all things that needs to be taken care of during that time you can uh, come with all your questions that you have at that time as well thank you so much for joining see you all next week kids sleeping habits kids special too along with teenage special sure ashwini christian we can definitely plan that we can definitely do that great thank you so much